Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Monday, which means two days ago I was supposed to have done a FL Studio 12 Basics tutorial. Today's going to be about Patcher. Patcher um, is an interesting kind of deal because it's a little bit like its own little universe. In fact, when you open it up uh, the first time, you might notice that uh, the way that the way you re or what you are presented with is something that says from FL Studio to FL Studio. And you can kind of think of this as being its own little dimension where you can put plugins and effects and route things and do all kinds of stuff uh, that you really could do without it, but it's more it's more of an efficient workflow. And I do actually mean efficient, uh, not necessarily that it could be better or worse for particular individuals, but because um, the traditional sort of mixer setup and, and ways of doing things is better been around for kind of a while. And it's always been, you know, how DAWs interpret things, but sort of the flow charty direct connection kind of thing that we're presented with when we use patcher is a, a more abstract way of looking at the same stuff this would normally be like oh you have a you have a plugin and then you put it in a mixer enter and then you put on an effect and then you get the chain the path the audio takes is literally the same it's just that it's presented to us in a more visual and efficient manner and one of the more other reasons why it's more efficient is that you can do stuff like you can split um you can do effect splits you know be like yeah, this goes in there and then it goes out, out there that kind of thing and this would normally take multiple mixer inserts to accomplish, but now it doesn't require all but one, even, just to put the patcher inside the thing, because this is actually, this is a channel patcher, which is a patcher that's designed to be used like a synth. There is another patcher, one that's designed to be used like an effect, and it can be loaded inside uh, the effect chain, and it's pretty much the exact same thing, except that it deals with more, just about entirely audio routing, as opposed to starting with MIDI input and then going into audio routing. So uh, the color system based on the, on the connections is denotes what they're what they're for. Uh, the green one is MIDI, and then the yellow one is audio. And there's also a red one, which is when we want to attach um, controls to controllers, like so. So now I, I linked the filter parameter to the knob up top to create the controller with that parameter. You don't need to do that though if you want to control a parameter. Like you just you can just right click it and automate it like everything else, but you have to activate it first. Without activating it, you do not have the traditional right click menu and then you activate it and then you do get the menu. And then that's cool. Um so patcher patcher is all about allowing you to have a more full on visual workflow over how things work out. Um but it, it can be a little bit confusing with more regular things. For example, if you're used to using vocoding uh, uh, using uh, image lines Vocodex, you might notice that if I were to uh, put two inputs into Vocodex, I say this is my carrier, and then I'll load this up as my um, my modulator. <laughs> Vocodex doesn't interpret this as being three different inputs as it would if you were doing it through the mixer inserts. It interprets this as just being one input because these guys are not the inputs. This dot is the input. So this means that if I want to actually use three different inputs, I have to come in here and actually add more inputs. Let's add three just to make this easier. Dirt, 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 dirt. Let's see when I come in here and I right click this, I actually have all three inputs available. Where if I didn't beforehand, it would just have the none input where it would it would interpret that as being its own modulator carrier. As if it were running just audio straight into the stack without doing any kind of uh, mixer insert routing. This is true for anything else that accepts side inputs, which is what it's referred to as. And most notably, especially with the term side, you might have thought the, limit, the free delimiter for things like side chaining, because you have to actually add an additional inputs if you want to have a side input for the process of side chaining. You can also add multiple outputs for things. So if you're using, say, FPC and you route more than one thing to have its own special output, you can actually have special outputs and specific for specific things, and you can actually make it so that you have different effects chains for those specific elements. And this... Again, we're doing all this crazy stuff in here, but this is still just one input. And um, one of the more recent things that I did is that I actually made a, a hard style kick using Harmers and the 909s, and it sounds like this, which might be really loud. And we're doing things that would have taken so many individual samples, individual mixture inserts, and so much layering, but we're doing it all inside one thing. And here also is a, a good example of the value of Patcher in that once you do this ridiculousness, you can save it, and you can load it as its own deal. You can even save and load individual if, uh, Patcher effects presets, and you can even load them into Patcher as a Patcher. So that's some coolness. There are more advanced things you can do with Patcher, but I'm going to leave those to be a separate video because this is just a video that I'm going to use to just get you into using Patcher because I do recommend that you use it a lot. I like using it. Uh, that's pretty much how I do everything now, and uh, I like it a lot. 
So if you have any questions about this, please let me know. And as usual, have a nice day.